Ali, I'm so excited to connect with you again. Okay, so we're going to be focusing on sexuality. And everything you shared is just a fascinating background story. I'm just going to relax and close my eyes and we're going to see what we discover here, okay? And thank you for all that insight. All right, let me make sure there's no, not going to be any weird distractions. Cell phone's not going to suddenly go off. Let me turn my speakers down. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. What can we do to help Ali with sexuality, sexual identity, relationships? Okay. We're looking at an image right now that's in motion. There's a lot of weird details to it. It's almost like we're sitting in a theater and our faces are really up close to uh, something. And it's like a piece of paper that's very, very long and it's got gold splattered on it and it just like moves in front of our face. So the image is the same, whether it's like over there, it's like, it's just this gold. We're just like staring at it like this. And then there's these weird like um, squishy fingers that are like kind of going up and down and they're above and they're below this um, golden paper, <laughs> okay? It's got like gold paint splattered on it and we're just like really closely looking at it. And it's almost like we're not uh, thinking. We're not asking any questions here. We're just like entranced for no explainable reason. And there's really, if you were to back up and to actually observe, there's really nothing worth looking at here. Absolutely nothing. There's more to life than this. This is not necessarily talking about sexuality. It's just, this is the first thing that I'm running into in your energy field. Okay, the next thing is I'm looking through your eyes now at this experience that I was having also simultaneously with you. And it was just like um, non-reactive. So I'm looking at it through your eyes now. You really need to see something in this. You need to like you need this reel of infinite paper and this odd scene that's so close to you so close to your face you need it to become depth you need it to become meaning you need it to become something more because the meaning here is is with you but it's just not accessible for some reason but you have to be able to access it even if the best that you can work with is this strange thing we're looking at. I tell you that the, I know right now so far, Ali, there's a lot of missing clues, but I'm telling this part of you to let go of this whole scene. You've been attached to whatever this energetic frequency is all about. You've been attached to it for at least 10 years or more, okay? And you're still looking, you're still looking, you're still looking, you're still looking. It's almost like, but if I leave this, if I move my attention somewhere else, then I might miss that opportunity. If I just wait it out a little bit longer, it will come, it will happen. I will, I, I will experience this. This is actually a huge block. It's a huge illusion. It's actually preventing you from a, accessing what could be a very beautiful relationship because your energy or you're investing a focus on not the right uh, balance of what you're wanting to get out of life, okay? <laughs> it's still a strange image. All right. 
we're moving in further and it's extremely dense and compact here interestingly enough i still don't feel like i have reached your sacral chakra i feel like um i'm more up in the heart region like kind of upper chakras even even not necessarily mind i would just say let's just say heart right now And there's just all these walls in front of me. And they're different sizes. But combined, when they're connected to each other, it's just like this like big wall. <laughs> Many walls connected creates one giant wall. <laughs> That's what it is. And it's uh, all awkward. It's all awkwardly built and it's thick, okay? <laughs> I say, why are you resisting your sacral chakra? Why are you, I mean, it's, the heart is a beautiful place to be. And true love and the meaning of love and spiritual love, it can be found deeply in the heart. But there is avoidance in you. With me going to your sacral chakra, there's avoidance. You feel safer with me going here into your heart. I mean, your sacral chakra is almost like a foreign place. It's like uh, something that could be completely not ever make any sense. Like um, trying to perceive an alternate reality that has nothing to do with our reality. Like anything we could possibly fathom life being like. And then this alternate reality, we our brains would just explode trying to make sense of what we were even looking at. That is how foreign your sacral chakra feels to you. And you just don't even go there. We're going to find out why this, this has happened. Now I'm starting to understand this image. Again, it's a distraction. It's working with something that could be a pathway or it could lead us to something even more meaningful. But it's just all a distraction. It's not working with the right materials, not even close. Because there's so much avoidance of the sacral chakra. So, <laughs> so how would you even know how to begin to... To accomplish this task of healing your sexuality without a sacral chakra. I mean, it's almost like you don't even have one, but you do. It's just like not turned on, big time not. <laughs> Probably the most not turned on sacral chakra I've ever experienced. It feels like a bowling ball. And there's nothing inside of a bowling ball. It's just like bowling ball. I don't even know what they're made out of, but it's like a solid thing. And it's just kind of like that. Me talking to you about it is actually, um, you're sending signals and you're having daydreams and fantasies about, oh, it looks like a bowling ball. But you, I'm actually creating a connection now between your third eye and your sacral chakra, which is um, creating an activation, okay? <laughs> just simply talking about it is getting your mind wandering into the sacral chakra area. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Okay, we're leagues beyond that weird introductory scene. Um, the walls are still kind of there in the heart. They're kind of disappearing, which means that energy is flowing and transforming or just moving into new experiences of your energy field. Um, third eye is definitely lit up. Your throat, your heart, and your sacral chakra are starting to want to express themselves together. And um, I feel like you're working with some of these familiar chakras in order to um, assist you in accessing something unfamiliar. Um, because it is like kind of scary in a weird way. Like there's a lot of resistance to the unknown here because it is so crazy unknown. And I, I take a part of your consciousness with me and I say, let's have some fun. This could be the most fun you've, you've ever had your whole life. Walking into your own sacral chakra 
walking into the unknown bowling ball and we're gonna find out what's in here and it could be totally like random it doesn't have to be scary it can actually be really funny and fun and delightful like it can be really exciting so let's like turn any type of resistance feelings inside out and have fun with this okay let's just have fun with this yeah you're wanting to like go there with me but you kind of um we're going down two different sets of stairs. You're in your own set of stairs next to my own set of stairs. And as we're going down and I'm having this conversation with you, there's a, this um, flap that closes and it's like, eh, you don't go any further, but I can go further, but you can't go further <laughs> for some reason that happens. <sighs> Resistance. I say we're already in the sacral chakra. All right. The first experience of it is it's like milky white and um, thick, like <sighs> it's almost like cottage cheese without chunkiness is like white. It's a white substance. It's like I'm in a pool of white substance from the bottom of the sphere to the top of the sphere. It's all around us. And there's a little bit of a opening here between the white substance and I can see a bit of like a, I don't know, peach colored liquid. It's just sort of like all in this together. <laughs> and I'm kind of moving my hand around and it does move around with my hand. The more I look into this, the more I just acknowledge it, the white starts to um, clear out and it just looks like a amni amniotic fluid. <laughs> Is that like it, it looks like a like a fluid, like a body fluid. It's not blood, though. It's a life giving fluid, though, like it keeps saying it's is a life giving fluid. It's like creates babies and stuff like there's something about the fluid that's good here <laughs> and there's a lot of it here i mean it's full to the brim <laughs> of whatever this it, it just keeps saying i'm like i'm trying to think of is there a word to describe like is this like a real fluid or is it just like an energy fluid that is reminding me <laughs> but it's like packed full of dna packed full of like fertility packed full of like um um energy creative energy that wants to create life like your sacral chakra is like going crazy wanting to create life like wanting you you getting pregnant could totally happen here <laughs> and you would have a really great pregnancy your whole body is like geared to it like is ready for this like you're ultra sensitive to it This is meaningful to you and um, it creates a spark in your heart because it um, takes the edge off of the word sexuality, you know, and, and transforms it into creativity, transforms it into something that is, that is beautiful. There's so, so much beautiful meaning to it, okay? Lots of beautiful images come to you about this. And it gives you a safety um, in getting to know your sacral chakra. It gives you a feeling of safety. It's not as if you need to, are afraid of this place. It's not as if you necessarily need safety, but um, you hold yourself back from it. And it's giving you the what you need to to lighten up on doing that it's like the bag of water is breaking i am seeing this now and all these fluids coming out like everything it, if you could feel the energy it keeps saying everything makes sense everything makes sense it's golden it's good it's great <laughs> and it's all like super it couldn't be more um healthy and vibrant and harmonious in here i mean you're crazy harmonious in here 
<laughs> what the heck? What are you doing? What is going on that this bowling ball is the most like amazing space? You can't even believe it. It's like so healthy in here. I'm I'm so shocked. Like I wasn't expecting this at all. It's like great in here. It's a very healthy environment in here. Okay, a little bit of vulnerability factor like resistance because I'm literally watching a bag of waters break and all this comes out. And now you're empty. And it's like a pointless space. It has a point, you understand it, there's purpose here, but it's a, it's like it just looks like um, a room in the of the house that will sometimes throw a, like a big um, like gala, <laughs> and then we'll just when that's over and the room's clean, um, we'll put like sheets over everything. And we'll close the door, and we won't enter that room again until a gala happens again. You know, <laughs> and so it's kind of like an unused room. Telling you this room though is really super great, super healthy. Is it possible that if you disconnect from your sacral chakra, that you're not influencing it with negativity? Like all your relationship with your sacral until I went in there was not connected to your sacral at all. I don't know where that energy was circulating through, other than the heart and some of the mind, like, um, but it's almost like this is the most preserved space. It's like pristine earth. There's no, not a, a tiny even speck of dirt. That's so it's like so mind blowing. This is part of, this is the next step helping us to understand why this happened in the first place, helping us to understand your relationship with sexuality, helping us to understand, okay? And it doesn't want to it doesn't want to just open up fully. I'm really close to seeing into this and I'm just looking at an empty like I could see you know, my memory of the female body from inside, like, seventh grade, <laughs> like, he, um, sex ed or something. Like, I'm looking at this image here, and it's just a dark, empty space. But it does, vi it has vibrations, and it has life force energy here. And you do kind of keep yourself separated from it. Just don't want to go there. Your heart gets really nervous when um, I show you the image and how it feels to me. And just ask you if you'd like to go walk through here and just take a look. <laughs> if you don't like it, you you know, it's your choice. You don't can leave at any time but it could be really exciting like um like you got to go visit an alien planet and it happened to be in your very uterus you know it's like an alien world and it's like you right it's right there you know you don't have to travel far to get to it and this could be the most exciting journey of your life because you're like starting fresh like a newborn baby getting to know the space it's kind of a blessing, like a really intriguing blessing that your soul chose to set up your life just like this so that sexuality would not really be, um, you wouldn't have that, 
it would just be like put off to the side on a level that it doesn't really doesn't really exist or it doesn't really need to have any participation you don't need to participate with it it in it in this lifetime um but now it's calling you now it's a divine time now it's time to have some fun and get to know this alien planet here inside yourself and it's super healthy okay It, it's already, it's like a lot of, you have some gurgly weird stuff in your emotional gut. It's kind of gurgling down. It's giving me a bit of cramping feeling um, in the sacral chakra area, but it's actual energy activation. It's movement. It's acknowledgement. It's, it's um, signals, sending signals in there. It's experiencing it. You may be surprised your life turning um, upside down in the best way. Like this could very well happen for you where it could even happen this year. Suddenly your life becomes all about your sacral chakra for the rest of your life. <laughs> that one place that you just didn't have any relationship with it and now you feel it calling to you now becomes the only thing that exists in your in your life and, and it's awesome it's like super maximum great <laughs> your life could just become what you never thought possible and it would be so alive and so freeing and so revitalizing and so exciting in all of the most harmonious ways beautiful ways i mean your sacral is buzzing so loud right now that, I mean, it's like, <laughs> I could see if, I mean, you tapping into that, it's like being on the verge of just like suddenly seeing, um, psychically seeing, you know, like, bam, whoa, I'm seeing auras, you know, you're like on the verge of a shift here and you're like, whoa, sexual energy, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like that. You're really close. And I mean, I feel just analyzing all this energy here that um, you may have a better relationship with your sexual body, sacral chakra than you could imagine. You just haven't tapped into it quite yet, but I think you will. I actually think you will. And it's gonna work out for you. <laughs> it's gonna come with a lot of incredible blessings and you even emanate a mother you have a motherly emanation to you i mean you do you emanate creator um, motherness you do but you also emanate healthy sexuality you emanate that i'm trying to talk to your energy field not just your sacral chakra just like you about love and relationships you were talking about a twin flame and getting to know more about the meaning of that to your body meaning of that to your soul meaning of that to you meaning of the word relationship and just getting more of a feel for that Okay, boy, you're interesting. You, you have uh, parts of yourself that are preserved. I mean, you may have preserved your sacral chakra. I'm blown away by how preserved it is. So as I talk about this word relationships, you take a preserved you and then over there, and then you take me to a you that isn't preserved. Um, and this is a sacral chakra that is kind of like imprisoned in a way. It's, um, there's a weird chain and it goes up, it goes from the bottom up through you and it stops like at the top of your uterus, okay? And then there's a weird chain that's kind of from your stomach to your heart and they're really tight and somehow they're interconnected. Even though there's a space, I can feel that they're pulling on each other somehow. And there's some screaming, a bit of screaming and anger. 
and a feeling of uh, like uh, like I can't sit right <laughs> for some reason. And so there's just this constant discomfort and the energy side of things. It's this constant discomfort. And it's noticeable. This is supposed to be about relationships. It's supposed to be about developing like soulmate bond. I mean, I'm not really feeling out twin flame energy here. Like I'm not feeling out a mega romance going on. I'm not feeling out like the ultimate intimacy. I feel like there's no sound at all when it comes to this, except this like tug of war between your sacral chakra, your emotions and your heart. And it like creates a discomfort where you're kind of like, like this trying to sit on a chair and you can't even like sit down because it's just like really jacked up there. Feels weird. All right, I'm touching the chain between your emotional gut and your heart, okay? It's very sensitive. I mean, very sensitive. So I'm, I'm touching that because even when I touch it, it's like I get ridiculous stress in my neck and shoulders. Like, ah, like almost like it could be electrocuting me, but it's not electrocuting me. It's creating major tension though. Hardcore tension between emotions and heart. This is having to do with relationships, okay? Now I'm gonna touch the one here. This is like mega sacral energy. Root is involved with this one too. Okay. You feel like you screwed up or you failed or you did it again. Um, that's kind of echoing through here. You just a you have so much genuine energy to you like you could you really have a lot of genuine spirit. So any idea of you failing is like the most ridiculous thought you could ever have because you can't you're not that type of you're not a you, there's it doesn't seem to be a bad bone in your body. Like so you failing at developing a relationship you never did. I mean, you're like the nicest person anybody could meet. That's literally what is vibrating like crazy here. I did it again. Um, you're awesome, actually. So just keep being you. But let's make sense of this, okay? Okay. We're going through this image into something a little bit deeper. This is about pain. This is a different dimensional space. It's more of a spirit space than a human space. But I see you and there's a, a knight and he, he has no, he's like completely in metal. And he has a chain around your neck and he's standing behind you and he's choking you and you're on your knees. And you can't breathe and you're struggling and you're struggling. It's like you're stuck in this scene. You're just forever stuck like a fragmented part of your soul. That it's not worth it. Everything that comes from this scene is saying, your soul saying, it's not worth it. Love isn't, like relationships, it's not worth it. All it's gonna do is choke you to death and bring you pain. That's all you get, it's gonna do. And then you're gonna get stuck in an alternate dimension where a weird knight is then choking you for all eternity. That is true. Your energy field is saying this big time. Which tells me that there's other lives connected to this. Lifetimes where, you would have fallen in love and a tragedy takes place. The tragedy is enough that it tells you not worth it. But it's not it's not like the tragedy that the your lover died in war or something. It's more like um you fell in love um in inappropriately kind of thing. And it was found out about and you were tortured for it or you were beaten or you were hung or you were something bad happened to you about this. 
And you said to yourself so loud and clear, it's not worth it. <laughs> so it's stuck. You literally, your soul stuck. And, and now you're kind of living that reality that it's just not worth it. So you wouldn't um, have any relationship with your sacral chakra. You wouldn't have any relationship with your sexual body. You wouldn't. Because you're still tuned in. Past, present, and future are all happening at the same time. So you're still that person that made that choice, that said that statement. You're still that person until you choose to be different. And obviously it's hard if you're not like able to see into the spirit realm and make sense of this. We don't know what we were before this lifetime. So we notice things are out of balance, but we don't really know how to fix them or we don't know what to do about it. We don't know what our bodies are saying. We can't hear the spirit realm. We don't have the psychic ability. You know? <laughs> um, but that is what's going on. That is explains the sexual stuff. And now you know. Now the universe has helped you to understand now. You still, a part of you appears in the scene and you're wearing a white gown and you're absolutely radiant. I mean, you look like a... I mean, you are radiant. I mean, I feel like um, the energy that you... that comes off of you is like the ultimate... Um, like every man would want to marry you in this day and age like a, it's a medieval kind of uh, um, party or something um, like the the town is celebrating and everybody's together in their beautiful dresses and uh, flowers and different games and things like that and foods um, you're ec echoing the, these feelings and these thoughts to me and I feel like I'm every guy at this gathering and every guy is like, you're the one for me. You're the one. Every one of them is saying this. You are, you are every guy's fantasy in this other life. Okay, I'm trying to make sense of, I mean, I feel just a rip is all it feels like. The next thing that happens, there's a rip. It's like your soul ripped. I can't make sense of it. I can't make sense of what happens between this special gathering and all the guys really attracted to you and then this rip. What do you mean it something ripped? Like, what do you mean by that? And it's like your heart, your your heart and your soul like ripped at the heart level. They just show me then rip happened. <sighs> the more I just say that, your energy is like, yeah, I know. And and the heart energy actually relaxes and it comes downward through emotional gut into sacral and through root, root even. Like this has to be resolved. This like super has to be resolved because you don't even know who you are. You've not even, you've never been yourself your whole life. You actually have never been yourself because of the sacral chakra thing and because it started in this other life. You don't even know who you are. You have never been yourself. This is actually also very exciting because who you are is very sexual, is very um, intimate, is very expressive, creative, um, loving, like to the max loving, like, like everybody's wildest dreams of what love could be. You can be that. I mean, your max volume of adorable, adoring, loving, you know, caring, <laughs> you're like the max on every awesome like relationship trait really loud too. You define that as a negative thing, overwhelms people, but yet you keep it pristine. You don't let that thought or that worry taint it. You actually keep those pristine. You've remained pristine with that. You're actually justified in your emotions. Where you would say, I'm being, I'm overwhelming people. You are actually being absolutely natural. A hundred percent natural. And those pristine emotions, 
of love and adoration and nurture and tenderness and like you're so such a dynamic lover it comes from your pristine sh sacral chakra not a speck of dirt in there <laughs> that you just turned into a bowling ball and put over there but it wasn't evil it wasn't like a bad thing it just was what you needed to do for right now okay now your sacral chakra is freaking buzzing with life and trying to talk to you trying to get your attention and you're hearing it you're noticing it that's going to help loosen up this other lifetime and help you get to know yourself you're just you've been reborn you're just now getting to know who you really are as your sexual body awakens <laughs> I can't even imagine what that would be like, to be honest. It, it could be like really off the charts. <laughs> like, I don't, I can't even imagine when your sexual body like fully awakens. It could be crazy. <laughs> but it, you're so pristine and you're so like pure. I mean, it's, it's like uh, amazing. It's really amazing. I'm really amazed. Yeah, part of this too, the shutdown, um, how do I want to put this? It, it has to do with identity. Um, just being you is being amazing. So maybe turning the volume down um, isn't being you anymore, right? Um, in order to kind of fit in with the world, um, c calm down that sacral because, you know, don't be too loud in how you love life, you know. Sacral is about loving life too and cherishing people and feeling loved by them as well and allowing yourself to receive love and give love. Like, it, it's all about love. Yeah, your, vol your, your volume is starting to get louder. I can't even imagine it getting louder than this, but it, it can get louder than this apparently. Um, I'm giving you per your permission back, which means I'm helping you to give yourself permission to love yourself for exactly as you are. And you're not afraid anymore, actually. Because this medieval princess is what you're like. I mean, you're, you're like the hottest thing. And you guys, like, you're off the charts, you know? You're like a medieval princess. Something happened there. And that kind of imprisoned your soul, fragmented. And it wasn't worth it. Relationships, I guess. I mean, that's like what you're saying. You're glowing so bright, like a, this, this is a swan queen or something. I mean, you're bl glowing so bright. And you're so soft and feathery. And you're so beautiful and awing. You're like the best ballerina the world has ever seen. You're amazing right now. In this weird space with this night choking you out, you're also over there just getting brighter and brighter and brighter and rewriting what you had said in that life. Just rewriting it, letting it go, and allowing yourself to become fully who you are. <laughs> Do you see how magical this is? Oh my gosh, this is so magical. <sighs> ah. I'm starting to understand what happened. Medieval princess marries. She, every guy wants to be your husband, okay? But the guy who becomes your husband imprisons you, makes you shut up, is basically an abusive jerk. He could be that way behind closed doors. And nobody would know. And that was a nightmare for you. Now I understand the rip. Now it all makes sense. You needed to know that. That's why he had the mask on. Because he's ashamed of himself. He does it behind closed doors so nobody knows that he is like this. And he cho chokes you. He thr like he doesn't let you speak. He doesn't let you have a voice. What a that, that really sucks, you know. <sighs> yeah, that was a really hard life. 
That was really wrong. Um, this is this whole scene it's starting to I hear like little tiny bubbles popping and I start to see the scene is like um, popping and disappearing and you're you, you have this beautiful swan self and she just starts to sob and she feels a relief a release from the life from bondage from the foulness of the most rancid, most horrifying nightmare relationship. You could have, there's all of these, there could have, any guy could have treated you like the princess that you are and that you were. But the one that you ended up marrying was completely awful. Hell. How wrong is that? How wrong is that? It's freaking wrong! <sighs> Makes sense. Makes sense why you came into this life with this relationship with sexuality. <sighs> so you're... I mean, she looks a swan woman. I mean, she's so full of swan feathers and she's so soft and she glows and she's glittery and she's ballerina-like. She's like the ultimate beauty of divine feminine softness and adorableness and she's great she's great she's a reflection of you and she's sobbing um their tears of re re like release and joy even um a completion a coming of full circle of freedom of moving on from that I mean, you have no hard feelings anymore towards that soul. You don't have any hard feelings about any of it at all. You move, you've moved on. You're so full of love. You're so full of love. You could really teach this world about love everything is just so beautiful right now just absolutely beautiful feeling it's just radiance it's just you being you and glowing and feeling free and tenderness in your heart too I mean you feel beautiful inside and out you feel beautiful inside and out you talk about this twin flame and i don't feel that this twin flame is your life partner um i feel like that's a reflection of um an attraction that isn't even you being you this session is going to start to introduce you to who you are and when you become who you are you're going to have different relationships attracting different people different experiences it's going to change everything in your life because you're not who you once were you're a new person because you're tuning into your sexual body which is creating a glow and a love of yourself and acceptance of yourself and permission to just love how you love and that's okay you're feeling more at peace way more at peace and this is also if you can't let yourself love as you actually love no relationship is going to help you with that until you help yourself with that okay which is happening here <laughs> really cool stuff all right new scene new stuff some stress okay because we're just letting go of stuff right now all right looking at your anatomy as a woman <laughs> i'm like looking at a chart or something okay now just bear with me but in your uterus in this image it's full of worms okay 
like earthworms. They're all squiggling around in there. Um, again, this is a, a se you separated this, um, that you have pristine parts of you. And this is one of the not pristine parts of you, okay? So we're going to go into this not pristine part of you. And you're disgusting, you're gross, you're filthy, you're dirty, you're slimy, you're nasty, like it's very gross. Like how would anybody feel, like any woman feel if they found out there were earthworms inside there? Like I couldn't live with myself, you know? <laughs> There's That's how you're storing energy of this kind in your sacral chakra. And it's just negativity, okay? It's not the truth about you at all. Why did you do that? Why did you say those things to yourself? Why did you want to hurt yourself like that? I hear the sound of a blacksmith who's very short. I mean, very short. I mean, it's like a fully grown, it's a guy who's like three feet tall. He's very strong too. I mean, he's really strong. He's a midget and he's uh, crafting something. And I can hear the sound of him beating on metal. And he's kind of wiping the sweat off of his head. This is another tough one. Everybody looks down at you. Not just because you're short, but they're, they're just, um, people are mean, you know? People are mean people. And so you're not, you're not uh, at the same level as everybody else. So you kind of treated rudely, not respected because you're a midget. But the cool thing about you is that um, you kind of, in your soul, you kind of understand that there's people that need to work on themselves but you're just going to be true to who you are. And so you didn't let that negativity shape you into somebody who would just wither away into a corner and die. You chose to just continue to embrace life, even if people could not embrace you. It's a very powerful statement. It's a very lonely life. And somehow you developed a beautiful relationship with the quiet, with solitude. I'm, I don't know what this is, but you're, you're having breakfast and it's toast, okay? It's like you, everything disappears and you taste this toast as though you taste every particle of heaven in creation <laughs> just in this bite like something about the solitude gives you plenty of time with your imagination and your imagination people would be like cuckoo you know this is real like you created extraordinary experiences for yourself beyond human experiences for yourself awing experiences because the toast really tasted that good because you allowed yourself to experience the texture the like the moment but you took it and you expanded it beyond like believability and every bite of that toast was like the most beautiful morsel i mean you did things like this in this life and you, you shared it with yourself that you kind of sense that it, life wasn't just what you could see. It was what you couldn't see too. 
So you kind of sensed a, a energy world or invisible people were there with you. And I see you just with yourself tasting this toast and kind of giggling to yourself um, because you're having this experience and nobody would ever know. Kind of sad too. You had nobody to share that with. But the thing is, if you had somebody to share that with, you never would have experienced it. Because you had to be in complete solitude to actually access experiences beyond our reality. You're not meant to be alone in this life, that's for sure. But your appreciation of solitude is, is coming from this memory, okay? Yeah, you're, I, I just experienced you, you surrounded by lots of people um, in conversation. And you can have times where it's just you in your own world. And times where you're more sociable. But I don't see you, um, I see you as a part of the community, okay? A part of the world. I don't see you kind of... Um, hiding out doing your own thing and that's the way you live your life which is okay people do that but that's not how it's going to be for you i do not feel that at all you have to let go of that lifetime as the midget because that is blocking you also from an actual true companion in relationship because you kind of long for that life again it's not meant to be this one all right so that life is actually blocking you <sighs> that life is always going to be a part of who you are but it's it's not meant to be relived right now just let it go until you can do that again if you want to you know just let that go. Everything is, it's getting kind of like, um, like a very strong and firm wooden wool. It just a wall that is in front of me, dark, dark brown wood. And I'm just standing here. It's kind of like new information. It's wanting to reach us here. But it's like a stopping point as well. Because your soul is actually catching up with all of this right now. You want someone to love you. You want to collapse in the arms of a companion and to be nurtured and loved. That is actually how you feel genuinely deep down inside. And you're so lovable too. I just, I'm kind of... I don't know if this is your fantasy or if I'm just supposed to plant a seed here or something for you to think about. Um, I think all of that is what's happening here, but I see you and you're in Seattle, Washington. They have that needle thing out there, like a space needle or something. Like they have a thing out there. Um, and I believe, I, have this, I don't even know, this is all just like kind of foggily appearing in my mind and, it, and I'm trying to like connect the dots of what is this called again? Is that like real or, <laughs> but there's like a, I believe a restaurant um, up there and I see you and you're laughing like hysterically over this like a gorgeous dinner with your soulmate, okay? And you're just talking and in your mind, the mind of both of you, I'm seeing memories of having traveled to different places and sharing lots of memories with each other. And it's not an intimidating relationship because it's a patient one. And it's not necessarily revolving around sexuality is the only thing that a relationship is about. 
it's very balanced and very kind and considerate of you um, and vice versa. Um, and you feel like an open book and you feel like you can express yourself and the joy that you um, express, like I see in his, um, like how he sees you is this glowing um, energy, like this swan energy, this like beautiful ballerina, like there's something absolutely glowing and adorable and genuine and pure about you. And that's the, his attraction to you is this pure energy that you express. It's just so genuine. It's like what he's always wanted to find was just a genuine person. So you not being yourself is not going to help you find him. You see, you have to be genuinely who you are. And your sexual body is absolutely beautiful. You feel more open to it. Just let it be whatever it wants to be whenever, you know, just every day, just... <laughs> you don't have to figure it all out today, okay? Just let the energy shift as it needs to shift. And let your body just be open to your sacral chakra, root chakra, working together with all the other chakras, okay? Let yourself embrace who you are and love you. And be your genuine, impure, beautiful self. Even with the volume up, okay? Because that's when you're going to attract a real companion. And you have, you, you have come to peace and let go of that extraordinary life as this blacksmith. And um, you've come to peace with this other life too. Because it doesn't matter anymore. It was so long ago. That life was a long time ago. It's how you kind of feel about it. You've moved on. And you feel a lot more accessible, energetically accessible and um, seen for who you are. For, for who you truly are. All right. Okay, there's another scene here. It's very, oh man, it's exhausting. And I feel like there's a tug on my third eye, like a tug on it and I'm very tired. And there's a tug on my heart too. And my ears are kind of bothering me. There's also the sound of a music box and being a child going to sleep at night. But it's like a restless sleep. Like what this scene, this beautiful, innocent girl, and everything looks white and fuzzy and pretty and cute. And this beautiful music box. And what this scene represents is a, kind of per a perfect moment. But the reality is this girl can't ever fall asleep. Her dreams are constantly... Um, uncomfortable and no amount of music box makes that go away so everything looks perfect but there isn't a perfect thing going on here it's not as beautiful as it looks this is a really hard life as well and this life um, became a mental issue okay because there's a psychic ability going on here, but it's almost like you were you were constantly seeing night terrors and um, dark kind of beings and things like that. And you, since you were little. And so there's kind of like, um, it's kind of like you're an insane, like there's some, maybe some mental issues here. Um, kind of observation, like a, Nobody wants to help you for some reason. And you're alone. This is interesting. You're alone in this life. 
And what ends up happening is the loneliness inspires you instead of fearing these things um, to make friends with them. It's how alone you were. Nothing made sense in that life. That's what this is like. It's about the only thing you could work with was being friends with them. It's the only way you could really express love to anyone. It doesn't feel like a very long life though. Like it feels like mm, you died younger, like in your 20s no real explanation about that other than just it was a short difficult life very lonely and confusing where you made friends with these dark beings and that was that helped bring relief to you boy that was tough that just came out of your heart here Now we can see um, more of your dynamic and why you are who you are today. Because you had these types of lives. Should cherish you. Hmm. Okay, Ali, thank you so much. Giving you a big hug. Mm. It's a really nice experience, beautiful experience. It's going to really help you out a lot. I know it's going to. Just let time also, you know, you, we need time too to reveal more. Um, but this is a very good start to what is like a brand new approach to life. All right. Thank you, Ali. I wish you a beautiful day. Wish you a beautiful um, rest of your week. <laughs> All right, take care.